Hey, welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, I'm going to show you how to download a repeater list. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. All right, so there are several reasons that you might want to download a repeater list. Maybe you have moved to a new area and you're not familiar with, uh, with that area and you want to get some local repeaters programmed up into your radio. Maybe you're traveling uh, to, an, uh, to somewhere for vacation and you want to go ahead and download a list of repeaters for that area that you will be traveling to. Maybe you're a brand new ham and you're not familiar with what's uh, in your area, uh, what repeaters might be in your area that would be active. So there's several different reasons we might want to download a repeater list. Now, you can also use an application like Repeater Book that's available uh, on your mobile device, and that is another great tool. But with a little bit of pre-planning, we can go ahead and have everything programmed into our phone before we take off on that road trip. So let's jump over to the Pi, and I'll show you how to do this. It's pretty quick and easy. Okay, so over on the Pi, we're going to come down to the ham radio subcategory, and we're going to go ahead and click on and open Chirp. Now, the great thing about Chirp is it is a free application and it is cross-platform. So this will run not only on the Raspberry Pi and Linux, but it'll also run on a Mac and Windows machine. So this can kind of be a good little tutorial regardless of which platform is your primary. Uh, inside of Chirp, let's come right up to this uh, top menu bar here and let's click on Radio and let's click on Query Data Source. Now, there's several different uh, data sources that we can query from, but I'm going to go ahead and use Repeater Book. Now, inside of Repeater Book, you have two options, and I'm going to go ahead and walk you through using both of those. The first one is a political query, and the other one is a proximity query, and I'll show you why you really want to use the proximity query probably most of the time. But let's do the, uh, the political query first. Now, I've already chosen the state here that I live in and the county that I live in. And then you can also choose which bands you want to look for. So I'm just going to search out the two meter band right now. Let's go ahead and click OK on that. And you'll have to give it a couple of seconds. It looks like it's going to open a blank document, but it's just downloading what it needs in the background. After a couple of seconds, you will get a list. Now, there's only two, uh, two meter repeaters in my county. Uh, and that's kind of problematic when you're just searching for a particular county, because I know one county over from where I uh, live is where the majority of the repeaters in this area are probably located just because it's one of the tallest spots in this area. I'm going to go ahead and close this one out. Again, I'm going to come up to this uh, radio uh, menu item here, come down to Query Data Source, come over to Repeater Book, and this time let's do the Proximity Query. So I'll go ahead and click on it. Now, this time I'm going to enter a zip code and then I'm going to tell it how far away from that zip code I want to search. So in this case, 50 miles. Again, we can choose what uh, bands we want to search for. So we can search all of them or we can uh, just pick out a particular band. Again, I'm just going to search for two meter repeaters within a 50 mile radius of my area. So I'll go ahead and click OK here. Again, it takes it a minute. It'll open the document to begin with, uh, and it will look blank. Give it a couple of seconds here, and we will see a downloaded list. So this time, I was able to pull up 22 repeaters in my, or, uh, within a 50-mile range of my area. Now, at this point, if you've got a radio that can be programmed with Chirp, we could go ahead and add these in, uh, or we could go ahead and upload these frequencies rather 
to the radio. But let's say you got a radio that we can't program with Chirp and you want to get this data out of it. Well, that's what we're going to do is we're going to come up to File from the main menu and we're going to come down to Export. Now, you've got the option of giving the file a name. Uh, so we'll just call this one uh, Repeaters and 37130. Uh, which was the proximity search that we did. We'll go ahead and tell it to put that on the desktop and let's export that as a CSV file. Uh, CSV is pretty common and should be able to be recognized by other applications. Even if it's not, let me go ahead and click save on that. And we'll get this list and it'll ask us what we want to export. Uh, we can choose all, which I believe all is already selected and then go ahead and click OK. Now I'm going to minimize out of Chirp for the moment and we come out here and we can see this CSV file that I just downloaded. Double click on that and I've got LibreOffice installed. This would also open with uh, Microsoft Excel and I believe uh, Numbers as well. Go ahead and click OK here and that should open up a spreadsheet for us. Now we could uh, copy and paste this data into another application if that application doesn't recognize CSV files natively. All right, guys, well, there you have it. That's how you can use Chirp on your computer to download a repeater list when you need one. I hope you found this helpful. Be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We'll see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.